Right, hello everybody, we're talking about circuits here and I built a wee circuit on my screen a 12 volt battery and a 6 ohm resistor Now, what current will be flowing in that circuit? From your national 5 work you should be able to tell me I equals V over R, 12 over 6 that should be 2 amps and it is 2 amps and in fact what would happen if I put another resistor in the same size let's change that 6 ohms what current would we get now so we've got a total resistance of 12 ohms so if we do ohms law I equals V over R we should get 1 amp and there you go we've got 1 amp now, why are we doing this, you might say? This was National 5, this was third year. Well, there's a problem. There's something we neglected to tell you last year. We were a bit careless with the truth. And here's the problem. Right, I'm going to hide these values a wee minute. Here's the problem. That's a 12 volt battery. And that's a 6 ohm resistor. What current should we get? 12 volts, 6 ohms, well, I equals V over R, 12 over 6 should be 2 amps. We're only getting 1.5 amps. Hmm, why are we only getting 1.5 amps if that's a 6 ohm resistor and that's a 12 volt battery? Well, the only answer can be that there must be some resistance somewhere else. Now, it's not in the wires, the wires have got negligible resistance. So where's the extra resistance? Now we could work out what that extra resistance is because if we're getting a current of 1.5 amps and the voltage of the battery is 12 volts then the total resistance of that circuit R equals V over I the total resistance of that circuit must be 8 ohms but we've only got a 6 ohm resistor where's the rest of the resistance? Well, the answer is, it's the resistance of the battery. If I show these values here, and here's the bit we neglected to tell you last year, batteries have got internal resistance, and that internal resistance affects the current in the circuit, but more importantly, it affects the available voltage that we have outside the battery. If I get a voltmeter just now, and I measure the voltage, across the terminals of that battery what do you think it will be? it's a 12 volt battery we've only got one external resistor in the circuit well the voltage across the terminals of the battery is let's do it 9 volts hmm why are we only getting 9 volts out the battery? we've lost 3 volts somewhere where have we lost that 3 volts? Well, the answer is we've lost that 3 volts inside the battery. The harder that a battery works, the more voltage it loses inside the battery itself. The more energy it loses because it heats up. The more energy is wasted inside the battery, the less energy is available to us outside the battery. Let's draw another wee circuit and I'll show you this a bit clearer. Okay, there's the same circuit got a 12 volt battery, 6 ohm resistor and another 2 ohm resistor here. If we measure that current, the current in the circuit is the total voltage divided by the total resistance. 12 volts divided by 8 gives us 1.5 amps. That's just ohm's law. If we bring our voltmeter out, then how much voltage does this one get? Remember, these two resistors share that voltage. So that one gets 9 volts. And this one only gets 3 volts. Why does it only get 3 volts? Well, if you do your ohms law, V equals I times R. The voltage across this 2 ohm resistor is 3 volts because the current is 1.5 amps. I times the resistance of 2 ohms. 1.5 times 2 is uh, 3 volts. Same over here. We do V equals IR. 
the voltage of this one gets V equals I times R, one and a half times six is nine volts. Or if you would rather do it by ratios, this resistor, the six ohm resistor, is three times bigger than the two ohm resistor. So it gets a voltage, it gets a share of the voltage that's three times bigger. So nine and three. Now we did that in third year really, about how voltage is shared in a series circuit. And the only difference here is that batteries have got internal resistance. And that internal resistance is locked inside the battery. So let's make that 2 ohms. There it is. So there's our current of 1.5 amps. And there's the useful output voltage that we get. The 9 volts is available to us outside the battery because the 3 volts across the 2 ohm resistor is lost inside the battery. Now we can't measure that 3 volts. If I try and measure the voltage across the battery, all we can measure is the useful output voltage. It's called the terminal potential difference. It's the useful output voltage. The number stamped on the battery, that 12 volts, it's called the EMF of the cell. The EMF of the cell is the voltage that you get when no current flows. Watch this, I'm going to take that resistor out. So no current's flowing. I'm going to measure the voltage across the cell. The voltage across the cell is 12 volts when no current flows. That's called the EMF, electromotive force. It's the ideal maximum voltage of the cell, and you can only measure that when no current flows. As soon as you put a resistor in, and current starts flowing, the battery starts working, then the battery starts losing energy inside itself because it's heating up, and we start losing some of that energy. So the useful output voltage is less than the EMF, the ideal voltage of the cell. Again, if I drop this down to 6 ohms, 6 ohm resistor, then we're only getting 9 volts of useful voltage from the cell. 3 volts has been lost. Let's have a look at this on paper. Right, this is typically how you would draw one of these circuits, showing the internal resistance of a cell. And Normally they would draw a little dotted line round the cell with its internal resistance and the letter E is used to show you the maximum voltage, the voltage stamped on the cell. Now that letter E stands for the EMF of the cell. It's the number stamped on it, 1.5 volts you would see on a normal battery. It's the voltage across the cell when it's not doing anything, when no current flows. It's the maximum voltage. It stands for electromotive force, and if you like, it's the force that moves the electrons. EMF, electromotive force. Now, R is our external resistance of the circuit. Small r is the internal resistance of the cell. And I is the current that's flowing in the circuit, usually measured on an ammeter. So there's our circuit, showing all those quantities. Now, V... If you measure the voltage across the terminals of that battery, the useful output voltage from the cell is called the terminal potential difference. Usually the letters used are TPD, and it's measured across the terminals of the cell. Usually that voltmeter is shown there, and it measures the useful output voltage from the cell. Let's give you a wee example to show you what we mean here. So here's a cell that's got an EMF of 12 volts and it's connected to an external resistance of 21 ohms and we get a current flowing in this circuit of 0 0.5 amps. Now we have to work out what the internal resistance of the cell is. So we know what the maximum voltage is, the 12 volts, and we know what the current is. If we know V and I, we can work out the total resistance of the whole circuit just by using the EMF and the current that's flowing. Just by using Ohm's law. In fact, Ohm's law is all that you need here. 
R equals V over I, but we're going to use the EMF of the cell, the ideal maximum voltage, divided by the current that we're told. So that would be 12 divided by 0 0.5, which gives you 24 ohms. So the total resistance of that circuit must be 24 ohms. So the internal resistance must be 3 ohms. 21 and 3 is 24. Now we know the internal resistance, we can calculate the terminal potential difference. That's the voltage across the external resistance, the voltage outside the battery. So if we want the voltage outside the battery, we use the resistance outside the battery. So let's do that. So we can just use Ohm's law. So V equals I times R. Now we know what the current is because that's the reading of the ammeter. It was 0 0.5 amps. And we use the resistance outside the cell to get the voltage outside the cell. So it was 0 0.5 times 21, which is 10 and a half volts. That's the useful output voltage from that cell. That also means we can determine the lost volts as well. Now we could just do 12 minus 10.5, or we could use Ohm's law, V equals IR, where the current was half an amp, and the internal resistance was 3 ohms, and we got 1.5 volts. Now you'll notice that 10.5 plus 1.5 gives us our EMF, our 12 volt supply, 10.5 volts outside the battery, 1.5 volts was lost inside the battery. These two resistors share that EMF. Now really all we need here is Ohm's law. V equals IR. That's the only equation you're really going to need. Remember V is the total voltage available to us. That's the supply voltage or the EMF of the circuit. I is the supply current. Current coming from the battery. And R is the total resistance of the circuit. But there's another relationship that we can use, and it's on your relationship sheet, that helps us to see what's going on a little bit clearer. Now the maximum voltage that's available to us is the EMF of the cell. But remember that EMF of the cell is going to be shared between the useful output voltage and the lost volts inside the cell. Remember big V there is the terminal potential difference, the TPD, the useful output voltage, and we're also going to lose some of those volts when the battery's doing some work. But those two voltages added together will be equal to the EMF. And the useful output voltage is the current times the external resistance. The lost volts is the current times the internal resistance. And we can simplify that relationship even further just by bracketing, taking the I out and bracketing the R plus R. Now if you look carefully at that relationship, that's really just total resistance, current, total voltage. That's just Ohm's law. So if you're happy using Ohm's law, use it. If you want to use the big equation, use it. Let's try another example. Right, here's my little example. I've got a bulb here that's got a resistance of 10 ohms. And I've got a battery that's got a voltage of 9 volts. That's its EMF. So the EMF is 9 volts, the external resistance of the circuit is 10 ohms, and we're getting a current of 0.64 amps. And what we want to work out is what's the internal resistance of the battery, and what's the TPD, what's the useful voltage that we're getting out. Now, I could bring my voltmeter down and measure that TPD across the battery. I'm not going to do that though because I want to work it out. So for a cell with an EMF of 9 volts and a bulb with a resistance of 10 ohms, if we get a current of 0.64 amps, what's the internal resistance and what's the TPD? Come back in a moment. Right, there's the circuit drawn out. Remember we've got an EMF of 9 volts. Current on the ammeter is 0.64 amps and an external resistance of 10 ohms. And we have to work out what the internal resistance of the cell is. 
Well, we know what the total voltage is, and we know what the total current is. So surely we should be able to work out what the total resistance of the circuit is, just using Ohm's law. R equals V over I. Total voltage available to us was 9 volts, and the current was 0.64. And if you do that on your calculator, you'll get 14 ohms. And because our external resistor was 10 ohms, our internal resistance must be 4 ohms. And now we know what both resistors are, we can calculate the terminal potential difference, the useful output voltage, and the lost volts. Now again, we can just use Ohm's law, V equals IR. As long as we use the current and the external resistance, we can work out the external useful voltage. So 0 0.64 times 10 gives us our TPD, useful output voltage of 6.4 volts. And our lost volts, would just be the difference between that and the EMF, or we could use Ohm's law again, V equals IR, and use the current and the internal resistance. So 0 0.64 was the current times the 4 ohm internal resistance, gives us a lost volt of 2.6 volts, and 2.6 plus 6.4 adds up to our 9 volt EMF. Right, let's go and check it. Right, we're back on the FET website. There's our circuit. Our current was 0.64 amps. Let's show the values. 9 volt EMF, 10 ohm resistor, 4 ohm internal resistance, and our TPD was 6.4 volts. There we go. Go and try and build some of these yourself. Let's get some practice with some questions. We'll see you in the next one.